my name is Rosalie and I'm the studio coordinator for the Fuse Box. This is the space that I'm standing in right now. And today I've put together a video of some ideas about what we have found particularly valuable to us when creating a creative space. Um, I'm going to be presenting them in a Bob Dylan style, like so. So first of all, hello. Um, the Fuse Box is an innovation space for creative digital and tech businesses. It's run and also home to digital support organisation Wide Sussex. It's about 3,500 square feet and it is largely an open plan space designed to encourage collaboration between users. This leads me to my first idea, um, which is the greater good. Um, and in my notes I've put a little um, in brackets the backstory. So, um, to give you an idea of the bigger picture, with the combined help from local universities and art councils, Wide Sussex ran a research and development project which studied the growth of Brighton's successful creative, digital and information technology cluster. The report analysed the interplay between the arts and humanities and digital technology, and it demonstrated how these factors led to innovation and business success. Um, the research report was called the Brighton Fuse Report, and it's really fascinating. What I do um, in the description box of this video is I'll put a link, so make sure that you um, check it out if you haven't already read it. Um, fast forward a couple of years, with the help of Recreate, Wide Sussex managed to build a physical manifestation of the outcomes of this research report. A place where we could help businesses and projects fuse and marry the disciplines of the arts with digital technology. With any new space, it's important to identify your main goals and make sure you set up facilities and processes that support these aims. Make sure that the vision is clear and shared with all the users of the space. By creating a common goal, it gives the space a sense of purpose and direction, so it's really important. Which leads me very nicely to my next idea, um, which is Talking Heads, which is basically um, communication. I just love the band. So working with the greater good idea, the main focus of the fuse box was to create a collaborative working space. And to do that, we knew that communication was crucial for success. Communication not only helps general happiness levels, but it also helps to achieve a productive and cohesive working studio. Active peer-to-peer -peer support relies solely on in-house engagement. At the beginning of the fuse box, we found users were entering the space at different times and it was hard to keep track of introductions. Um, so what we did to try and counteract this issue is that we actually built um, a welcome wall at the beginning of the space um, and we just kind of made everyone um, take a selfie of their face and, um, and print it on a piece of paper and just by their face they wrote their name, um, their job title, you know, what company they work for and just a little bit about themselves um, just as a kind of a handy guide for any visitors or other users in, in the space to kind of say hello to people. It's really hard, I think, when you've been in the space for a few days and you might have already been introduced to someone and if you've forgotten their name, it can be really um, difficult to approach them. So we felt having that kind of, um, that guide at the beginning of the space really helped um, make connections. Finding the right resources. Um, I'm using resources in quite a broad sense. Um, I think it's quite paramount to have, you know, all the basic um, requirements of a studio. Um, so that might involve running water, first aid kit is really important, um, a printer that works, which can be hard to find at the beginning, um, Wi-Fi. But um, we found that you can actually build other resources that can be valuable and that don't involve a lot of money. So we created a donated library. We asked visitors and users of the space, if you had one book that truly inspired you, what would it be? We welcomed contributions of new and used books that all shared the same loose theme of schooling, be that business related or a more holistic approach. Also, while on the subject of resources, signage is key to get users aware of where and how studio facilities work. In the fuse box, we wanted to create the space that empowered the users to be independent. People respond to directions rather than suggestions. So it's best to keep it minimal and to the point. Use positive language as it's proven to be more effectual. Be open to suggestions. Let people add their own signs or make edits to the existing ones. This is a very important one. Rome wasn't built in the day. 
Appreciate you have a 100% unique space. An existing successful model may not work for you. Do your research, but find out what works for you by trying out different methods continuously. In the beginning stages, never stop testing. Um, and I should probably say that you should never stop testing even in the middle or the end stages as well. Nurture and, and encourage change. It can take time to convert habitual behaviour, so it pays to have determination and patience. Um, also, don't underestimate the power of friendship. Um, bring cake into work. If someone looks like they're having a bad day, ask them what you can do to help. Help people connect the dots. Organise social lunches and pub trips. Without people, this space would just be an empty space. So it's really important to take the time to get invested. Here we go, this is the uh, penultimate idea. Think outside the fuse box. It's very easy to become absorbed in the ecosystem within the space. Remember to engage with the community and don't feel limited to social media. New England House alone is home to about 90 different creative businesses. So this is the building the fuse box is housed within. Um, when we set up the fuse box, we wanted to support our neighbours by being a free resource for the building. Um, and when I say resource, um, we've got a meeting room space. So um, at the beginning, um, we kind of emailed people um, in the building and said we have a meeting room space if you want to use it. Um, and when we found that the emailing wasn't always cutting the mustard, not everyone checked their emails, not everyone was on the mailing list, we actually went door to door um, just saying hello and getting connected personally. It can be quite hard. I think you need quite a lot of enthusiasm and, and resilience. Um, but I think it's really worth taking the time just to kind of engage with the community outside the studio. Um, at the heart of this space is a belief that Brighton is a pioneering city for innovation within the arts and digital technology. Promoting ourselves through word of mouth and ensuring the space is accessible by all it is essential to sharing our mission with the world. So that's the end of my presentation. It was quite brief. Um, if you have any more questions or um, if you want to just kind of connect with us and follow our journey, please do. It'd be really lovely to, um, to say hello. So find us on Twitter. We have a Tumblr. I'll put all the links in the description box below. So thank you for listening. Have a brilliant day. So hello. Um... This is the second part of my um, video about the fuse box. Um, I've just finished my presentation, but I'm still standing in the meeting room. So I thought it would be a good opportunity just to give you kind of an informal tour of the space and some of the resources and ideas that I touched upon in my video. So hopefully I won't make you too travel sick and I'll try to go slowly. But um, here is the meeting room that I'm sitting in, or standing in rather. Um, and it's great to have this kind of separation of the main space so just to have you know a bit more privacy have you know um, smaller workshops to take place here um, lots of fun things have happened in this space um, everything from kind of away days um, to kind of um, doodle workshops and um, just behind me there in the background you can see part of New England House which is the building that we're based in it's a, it's a fascinating building in Brighton, if you've never seen it. It was um, built in the 60s, I think 1963, and um, for industrial purposes. So it's got a lot of character, and um, today it homes about 90 different kind of creative businesses, everything from um, wig makers to textile conservationists, um, digital companies, artists, it's a massive melting pot of creativity and there's lots of exciting things that are happening in the building so it's really nice to be part of it. Um, so let's have a little walk, see if I can multitask. Um, so I touched earlier upon um, resources, so Oh, very quickly, just while you're probably wondering why there's a, a, a headless mannequin, um, the studio, that um, the fuse box, um, used to be a completely disused space. Um, that's how we got some of the Recreate funding. Um, and so it laid 
barren for about 13 years. Um, no electricity, no water, filled, the, filled with asbestos. And um, the last tenants were kind of an old kind of textiles um, company. So it was kind of a, a barren space with a few mannequins kind of dispersed around it. So we... Um, we refitted the whole space and obviously got rid of the asbestos, luckily. But um, we thought it would be nice to keep some of the um, some of the remaining props just to remind us what the space used to look like. So there he is. Uh, I think he's called Manny, which is a very um, inspired name for a mannequin. <laughs> um, and so this is our donated library wall, which is a brilliant, uh, you know, free resource of um, of knowledge. Um, We've kind of said to anyone using the space, most of the time people have asked us, oh, is there anything that we can bring for you? And we said, yes, please. You know, if there's been a book that's been valuable to you or your project, um, you know, please donate it. And, um, and they have, as you can see. Um, and it's great having them. There's, you know, really varied content here. Um, and what we've kind of said to people as well is if you are donating, well, you know, we've welcomed people, so... It wasn't a, a must, but um, we welcome people to leave their details in the book. So, um, The Art of Innovation, let's see, hopefully, ah, there we go. So we've got, Jim Byford has popped his business card in here, which is, is great to see because I think it's really great if you've read a book that you've found helpful um, or useful or really interesting to know who donated it in the first place. And obviously, if you've got their contact details as well, as you know, you can send them a tweet, drop them an email, and be like, "Hey, thanks for that book. That really helped me." And you know, oh, chapter nine was interesting. What do you think? So, you know, you can carry on the conversation if you, if you wanted to. Um, and I'm glad that Jim Byford's name came up because um, quickly to introduce him, he was our researcher in residence for um, Fusebox 24, which is a fantastic startup program that took space in the Fusebox here. Um, 24 weeks, 10 different startups, all creative or digital, um, and um, it was a really great program. And since there's been a research report released on the program, so I'll include the link again. So if you want to read more about you know what took place during the program, um, please check it out. It's really good. Um, lastly, just um, there's our Wi-Fi um, password. Um, which I thought I'd just show you because um, if you are um, thinking about starting a creative space or you might re be able to relate to this if you have a creative space, but my number one question, no matter how many signs I make of these and put them everywhere, is what is the Wi-Fi? So um, you might as well just have it tattooed on your forehead because, yeah, that's the number one question. <laughs> so this is the front door of the fuse box. So let's go in. So behind me here is the welcome wall that I spoke about quickly. So um there you go. Um and just to reiterate what I kinda of said in the presentation, we kind of invited people to um take a selfie of themselves. There we go, it's lovely Phil Jones. Uh, who's the MD of Wired Sussex. Um, kind of put your job title, what you do in the space, and, um, and a little bit about yourself. So some people have been quite, you know, um, business-focused and said, you know, what, the, what um, they do here, and some people have kind of included a few more personal details, which is quite good, you know, as an icebreaker. Um, Just looking for my one. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's a bit like Inception. Um, and I've put that I like... Um, that I'm studio coordinator and that people can ask me any question they'd like to. Um, what's the Wi-Fi password? And also um, my current obsession was Serial and This American Life, um, which is a podcast. Um, kind of hoping putting it up there that someone would come up to me and say oh my goodness those podcasts I love them too but um not yet but you know hopefully um <laughs> maybe by being this video someone else would be like yes I love those podcasts too um and then quickly 
here's a little tour of the main space and I haven't actually said to anyone that I'm filming so everyone's going to be probably looking at me like I'm being weird right now. So behind me there is uh, Wide Sussex. Working very hard. Um, and then the rest of the space is, as you can see, open plan. Um, so we didn't want to build any walls, we wanted it to create kind of a culture of collaboration. So that's why it's all open plan. And um, it's nice and sunny in Brighton today, so we're kind of being blinded by white light at the moment, but there we go. So I'm going to come round here. Um, put myself against the what's happening board um, so thank you for watching and um, if you've got any questions then yeah please connect with us on social media and drop us a tweet or an email and um, say hello thank you bye